In this lesson, we will work on refining our facial deformations. We'll get started by adding animation that'll help us get through this much faster. Let's head over to our trackbar. We'll hold down Control Alt and we'll drag to our right with the left mouse button so we can reveal frame zero. Remember, once we add animation to get back to our skin pose, we need to go back to frame zero. All right, so what we can now do is go to wireframe mode. We'll grab the upper jaw. We'll turn on auto key and on frame 20, let's say we rotate the upper jaw back. We'll notice that there are a lot of areas that cave in, but no worries. We'll get this taken care of quickly with our envelope capsules and with weight painting. So we shouldn't be worried about this. Let's go ahead and turn off auto key. All right, the character's like, please fix me. All right, so let's go ahead and get to work. We'll go ahead and unfreeze our model layer. Go ahead and grab the face. Let's go ahead and turn on edit envelope mode. Let's press F3 to go back to shaded mode and we'll get started by tweaking the upper jaw's influence. So we'll grab the envelope capsule. You can see this yellow handle here. Let's go ahead and grab its endpoint so we can start to stretch our envelope and have it capture more influence. So we're going to bring it back to the back of the head. You can see we're already getting a pretty good result here. We'll need to start increasing our influence. Take a look. It's looking much better. So we'll increase the influence on the outer region and inner region. The inner region is going to add more influence. The outer region is mainly used to kind of soften our influence a bit more. So we'll just go ahead and increase our handles a bit. I'll go back to the outer region and bring that up a bit more just to kind of make sure we have the ear added in our influence region. And I'm also looking at the back of the head making sure that that looks nice and smooth. Great. Not too concerned with the jaw just yet. Remember, we're just blocking in our idea. So that looks good. I think this would be a good time to start weight painting. So we can go ahead and find our paintbrush. We'll turn off Paint Blend Weights. We'll go to our options. Right now our max size for the brush is set to 20, but I bet if we were to use that, if we were to turn on our brush, you can see it's way too large. So we might go ahead and drop this to about one. Much better. Now we can go ahead and work with our hard brush. And when we're ready to smooth out our weights, we can go ahead and work with the softer brush. Okay, great. So we're just blocking in our weighting right now. And we can start with the top of the head. So with the same envelope object selected, we'll just start to paint in influence. Great. So already we're getting volume back. Let's make sure we're on frame 20 because what we don't want to do is paint on areas that look really nice. So take the back of the head for example. You could see we're getting some really nice smooth results here so we just want to make sure we keep those that will save us some time let's fill in the ear with weights that go right to the upper jaw remember we don't have to be too concerned with the right half because we could always mirror our weights to save time and speaking of saving time we don't have to wait to the very end to save our weights as well if you notice that you're getting some pretty good results and you know that you still have more waiting to tweak, well, you could still just go in and save your weights so you have a backup file in case you don't quite like where you take your waiting afterwards. You could always go ahead and revert back to that file. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the eyelids as well. Remember, it's best to go ahead and just block in our weight and fill in these areas now so we know exactly where they've been weighted to. So when we're ready to get to finer areas like the eyelids, it's a lot easier for us to redistribute weight. Okay, great. So now we can bring our attention to the lower jaw. Let's go ahead and turn off our brush. We can go ahead and grab our envelope here and we'll start to increase influence a bit. We want a bit of a pull on the upper lip, but not too much, so let's be very careful. All right, great. We can now go ahead and grab our paintbrush. We'll start to fill this in. First, working on the area around the lower lip. 
Then once we've managed to block that in, we can go ahead and start to move to the lower lip and inside of the mouth. Just one step at a time, so this isn't overwhelming. And then remember, you could always start dropping your brush size if you need to. So we might set it to about 0.3 to get to these tighter spots. Much better. Okay. So we'll start to get to this area right at the center of the mouth. If the bone objects are getting in the way, you can always go to your display tab and hide bone objects. You can still paint weights. Let's head back over to our modify panel and turn on edit envelope mode. Let's go ahead and grab the lower jaw again and turn on our brush. All right, great. So this is looking much better already. Go ahead and start to take some points at the corner of the mouth and weight them fully to the lower jaw. And then what we'd want to do is maybe set our strength to about 0.5 and smooth those areas out. And then we'd want to start dropping our strength even more when we're ready to start polishing our weighting. And remember to keep a mirror nearby and use that as reference, especially when it gets to areas like the, the corners of the mouth that get kind of tricky. All right, great. Now for the top of the mouth, we know that we can wait to our upper jaw. So we could always go ahead and select that influence. Start to fill in some weighting here. Great. We can go to the next row and do the same thing. This area would be pretty dark anyway on a, on a character when you're finally ready to render out your animation, you notice that the inside of the mouth is hardly ever seen, but if you are working on something a bit more realistic, well, you could always add more polish, but it shouldn't take too much time. Already we're getting a really good result here. I might go ahead and switch back to the lower jaw and grab our brush and start to paint the points back to that bone object at the bottom of the mouth. All right, that looks nice. And you can see that the right side needs a bit of work. Well, let's say we go ahead and mirror our weights across. So we're going to find our mirroring tool. Here it is. Turn on our mirror mode. And we'll now go ahead and use paste blue to green verts. If you need to increase your accuracy, then we could always increase the threshold. I'll go to mirror. Then go ahead and click away to deselect and start to take a look at what we have just done. And that looks really nice. So here, let's go ahead and turn off mirror mode and go back to our paintbrush. We can just go ahead and take this point that is being pulled by the wrong envelope object and paint that back to the lower jaw. And you can see how well that looks. So this would be a great time to save your weights out. So feel free to do that. Again, you just head over to advanced parameters and then choose save as we've done before so feel free to do so I'm not going to do so here but by the end I'll have a a weight file for you to work with if you need to kind of use that as reference all right great well I'll leave the rest up to you because we kind of know the process already we just want to go through and kind of smooth out our weighting now we've already made great progress and there are just a few points to clean up we're not getting to the eyelids just yet. We're going to move on to the next lesson and take care of the eyelids. And I'll show you a quick way to get those taken care of. Again, we're just going through techniques to help you save a bit of time. So I'm going to stop the lesson here. By the next lesson, I'll have the mouth tweaked and any other areas around the mouth to just make sure that our deformations are looking nice before we get to the eyelids. And then once we start to work on the eyelids, I'll show you some techniques we can use to get them done very easily. And it's nothing that we haven't done already. So let's say we go ahead and again move to that next lesson and finish up our waiting by taking care of the eyelids.